I'm gonna get started. You guys ready? Ready. Roll call. Okay. Mr. Banyo. Present. Mrs. Powell. Present. Mr. Blevins. Present. Mr. Halls. Present. Mrs. Butts. Present. Okay. Pledge to the flag. To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Treasurer's recommendations. It is recommended that the minutes of the March 21st, 2016 regular meeting of the Western Reserve Local Board of Education and the minutes for the special meeting held on March 7th, 8th, 10th, and 28th be approved as mailed to each member in advance of the meeting. So moved. Second. Mr. Banyo? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Pott? Yes. Mrs. Pott? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that the March 2016 financial reports be approved and the March listing of bills be approved as mailed to each member in advance of the meeting. So moved. Second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that the voluntary student accident sickness and football insurance be renewed with National Guarantee Trust Life Insurance Company administered by Love Insurance Agency for the 2016-2017 school year. So moved. Second. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Superintendent's recommendations. It is recommended that the board authorize the superintendent and treasurer to contact American Business Center concerning the upgrade of copiers in the high school and elementary school offices. This little, is little bit. the program that we, basically the two that we have in there, well actually all of ours are pleased to buy. Right so basically with what I, the information I'm giving you, I think it's $150 more a month. And that's state, state pricing, so it's the same no matter where we go. Um, that would give us new copiers in the two offices. We've had a lot of breakdowns. Our worry is with final exams, end of the year awards, we, we print our own graduation um, diplomas, uh, programs. Oh. Uh, you know, we get a breakdown and we're trying to do those that last week. They, they'll, even though our lease is up in August, I think, uh, technically, yes, September. we can get the new machines. <laughs> so um, they, we had met with them back in February, and that was the pricing. And I talked to them today and told them we were going to talk about it before meeting. I would get back to him. Mm -hmm. And um, for basically an additional $154 a month. So we're basically two. renewing new leases Just for on new machines. Just the, on the two. The two yeah, office machines. Okay, and they're taking those back in trade. No, no. We they're own. ours. We own okay. them. Okay. So we so, put them uh, one over across Where the they're not used as much because yeah. they're still mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just they keep know. up with the volume of the offices. And ABC really does a great job maintenance wise. In fact, we probably put the whammy on them because the day we met with them, we <laughs> raved about how good they were with maintenance, and I think they've been out almost weekly since but, but it's just because the, those mm -hmm. copies are maxed out they you know they have a lifetime yeah of a million copies or something oh, like that. Mm -hmm. and we're at like 999 yeah thousand something so they'll still be serviceable mm -hmm. for limited things but when somebody's trying to run and you know and they're pretty complex copiers they'll do the the, the program type things and they'll do um, you know a lot of different types of jobs not just run single mm -hmm. copies staple and sort mm -hmm. two-sided mm -hmm. all that so um, you know we just thought okay. rather than get into a bind so moved on that yeah. second. second mrs potts yes mrs powell yes mr diamond yes mr Blevins. yes mr Hall. yes it is recommended that the board approve the purchase of nine radios from stanley communications for safety and security reasons along with bus driver communications at a cost of three thousand nine hundred fifty eight dollars and seventy cents what what we have with those is the radio that i currently use to monitor the buses in the afternoon 
I get a machine gun like static probably <laughs> that ranges from five to ten seconds long probably anywhere from ten to fifteen times in two hours well what, what we found out is that those lights the light FCC license for that frequency that radios program you don't have that license so somewhere else there's something that's causing that static and what they told us from Staley's is that it could be anything like, um, for example, golf courses that have automated watering. There might oh, be signals yeah. sent back and forth to turn the sprinklers on, turn them off. It could be uh, oh my gosh. gas utility right. readings. Uh, you know, it could be anything. I'm not getting any voices or anything. Anyway, we found that out. They came out, they checked our antennas, they checked our repeaters, everything was in good shape. Really all we need is, a, is radio for uh, so it can be able to communicate with the buses in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then we were talking with our resource officer and Doug and Debbie. Um, some, we have really no communication with the playground aides. And then just for safety. So we, we got the nine. There would be uh, one in each office with the secretaries, one with each building principal, school nurse, school resource officer, superintendent's office, central office. Because if there is a lockdown, sometimes over there we don't know that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they're, they're quality radios and they'll be on, on the frequency that, that is ours. And so the ones that the buses have will work with the ones that are going to comply oh, so with that. Are good. Okay. 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 And we are, I think, pretty sure a PTO is considering donating maybe $2,000 toward the purchase of this. So, wow. Um, they were pretty excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, very much looking more science as far as Great, great. That's great. Okay. A motion? So moved. Second. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Benya? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Fox? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that the board approve the quotes received for asphalt ceiling coating, striping, um, see attachment and award the contract to Everbright Inc. at a cost of no more than $35,000. Everbright is right here local in North Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, we, we met with them. They the, the only thing, the reason we worded it that way, no more than 35000 their bid came out to be at 35000 or slightly under that. Um, what we're looking at is possibly, if you remember last summer, we used the crack sealing machine that Berlin Township had and at a much reduced cost, we're able to do the majority of them. There are a few that popped up this winter and then some that we need to just kind of redo. Um, so that would be 3,500 less than the quote if, if we get to do that. It would be a cheaper well, than $3,500 yeah. to do that with uh, the township. I know that uh, Dave Portmas has initially talked to Kevin yeah. Windham on that. You had one other bid? Yeah, there was another bid from uh, a company, the driveway company in Poland. And total was forty-one thousand two fifty. Wow! And it was uh, thirty-eight thousand to clean and seal the parking lot, and then striping was another thirty-two fifty for a total of forty-one thousand two fifty. And this price from uh, Everbright includes the striping afterwards for the parking areas. So oh, wow. mm -hmm. about it's a big difference. Yeah, five to ten thousand dollars difference in the price. And we're trying to going to try to schedule that around the Fourth of July when. Our activities are, are down and mm -hmm. we I mean we can still easy enough move traffic with the gates that we have and block roads but just that much less here with the uh, false course starting mm -hmm. kind of in that downtime and trying to get mm -hmm. that done at that time. Well obviously uh, baseball will be mm -hmm. yeah. they're about done about then. Yeah usually by around then we'll, we'll yeah. talk to them and see but, uh, we should be able to cordon off any areas that we mm -hmm. need to. That's the plan. A motion. So moved. Second. Mr. Bennion? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. yes. Motion carried. It is recommended to add Catherine Holabaugh to the certified substitute list. So moved. I'll second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Benny? Yes. 
Motion carried. It is recommended that Jason Cochran be hired as a strength and conditioning coach for April, May, and June as per the salary schedule in effect. So moved. I'll second. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Banyo? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Motion carried. It's recommended that Edward Anthony be hired as the assistant varsity football coach for the 2016-17 school year. Second. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Banyo? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Hawks? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that Andrew Whitmer be hired as an assistant varsity football coach for the 2016-17 school year. So moved. Second. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Benio? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Okay. Motion carried. It is recommended that Robin Hillis be hired as the high school cheerleading coach for the 2016-17 school year. So moved. Second. Mr. Benio? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that Christine Capabianca be approved as an unpaid volunteer high school cheerleading coach for the 2016-17 school year. I'll second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Benio? Yes. Motion carried. Addendum. Um, it is recommended that the board hired Kitja Derrickson for the three hour reserve building janitor position effective April 14th, 2016, as per the salary schedule in effect. So moved. Second. Mr. Banyo? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. It is recommended that the board approve the 2015-2016 school year Mahoning County Interagency Agreement between the Mahoning County Educational Service Center and the Western Reserve Oak Local Schools regarding provisions of services for children with disabilities from birth through age five. So what is this? Preschool. It's just through the, the county. Oh, okay. It's uh, for the preschool. Again, okay. If you have a preschool student who's identified with special ed needs, gotcha. Um, rather than the cost being absorbed just by us, it's because this is kind of new. It's now. I don't remember. No, we, we've done it every year. I'm not right. sure that we. I think it's new to the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Because like, I don't remember it. So. <laughs> yeah, we just they, all the schools in the county kind of okay. together on that as part of the ESC. I'll second it. Rich first did it. Whatever. First, first did it. Mr. Blevins. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mrs. Fox. Yes. Mrs. Powell. Yes. yes. Mr. Benio. Yes. I make you laugh. Motion carried. I'm a third. <laughs> Thirded. Building principal report. Who wants to lead off? Hello. 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 Yes. Um, it's, it's starting to ramp up and we're getting, I can't believe it's April. I can't believe we're already in the for the last five weeks into it. It's gone by fast. We ended right before um, Easter vacation. We had a great time with um, COSI. The Easter Bunny even hopped on in and passed out candy to the kids. That was awesome. And we came back and it's been, you know, this is testing month. So we've been, we started, we started our testing in the elementary school next week. And we're, we're opting for two days of for each test, just because it's intense, and we figured to give the kids the best chance possible, we'll do two days for each. Um, we have a lot of field trips coming up. Fifth grade went to Skate Zone and they did physics. It was pretty cool. Um, April Davis, she shot me pictures and things, and they were actually taking skates and building ramps and doing all kinds of neat things. So it was kind of nice, something close. Um, we have a couple of different ones going on now. We've got somebody going in at the beginning of May to the planetarium and the butler. But we also, I want you to know that we also have a lot of things that come in the school. Um, in Youngstown Historical Society has these big suitcases. We, we order those and they come in and they do presentations with them. Uh, Mrs. Riccardi comes in and reads to the children puppets. So we have a lot of other things that are coming into the school. 
we partnered this year with the Cleveland um, Museum of Natural History and brought, we actually did that Skyping session where they had, we, the kids had kits and they used the kits for the artifacts and then we, we actually, they could actually see the person from Cleveland Museum and they were walking them through and teaching them. It was wow. all via like teleconference. That's cool. cool. So yeah, there's, there's so much more. I went to a meeting today and there was so much to learn with technology and so many useful ways to use it, not just for the kids to be typing, but just for them to integrate it into the curriculum. So we'll be doing some more of that this year and that, that was pretty exciting. Um, at the beginning of May, we'll start Special Persons Week and that's always a fun week to do. And then a couple of things we're doing curricular-wise. We had our meeting, we took, uh, Doug and I took representatives from each wing and we trained them in the use of Ocali, which is at Ohio Center for um, Autism and Low Incidence. And then it fits perfectly into our positive behavior and structural support um, team because it's creating uh, positive spaces for students. Not always are our bright classrooms the best place for students. That's for kids with attention deficit, sensory disorders, that's way too much for those kids to handle. So we're trying to like reinvent spaces. We're learning about sensory areas for these kids who get overstimulated to be able to go and kind of cool, cool down, chill out right in the classroom. Um, we're just learning strategies. And then the, the thing that we're really, and this is something I truly believe in, is you know kids are born kids. And when, they, when things go wrong academically, behaviorally, something happened. I mean, there's something going on. And we have to drill back. And sometimes those are long conversations or big conversations on, let's like dig down and find the triggers. What's going on with this child? And so we're really, that was one of the things that Wendy Cizak from Ocali came in and started working with this team. We're going to train all the teachers in this in August. So it's a really good way. It's a, it's a pretty scientific way to look at what's going on. You know, what's going on with these children? And that's the way that you fix it. So anyway, that's a start. And um, I just wanted to go over with you because I think it's important for you to know because you'll hear from the public what happens when a child does struggle. So we start out, and if the teacher sees a child struggling or if we see him, we come together as a child study and we look at them, the child, we look at all the different pieces and we try some things. And then we call the parent in and we have the intervention assistance team where we work with the parent and we build a program for that child. It might mean working with an intervention specialist. Let's see what's going to work for them. It might mean pulling the speech pathologist in. We're really just trying some different things to see what works. Sometimes it's just a maturity thing and we get them over that hump and they're good. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. And sometimes we need to um, really look at the way they learn and so we do a little bit more testing, more direct testing and we bring, and we bring the school psychologist in and, some different people, sometimes the occupational therapist, and we bring them in and we put a plan together and our goal is to get that child remediated and get them back into that regular class. Well, they are always in the regular classroom, but get them back on track as soon as possible. So just so you know kind of what our plan is going out when we have kids that struggle, because we're getting more and more of them like that. And part of it's because the curriculum is very different now than it used to be. So. Thank you for what you do, though, Debbie. Mm -hmm. You're oh. very exciting, and you make it exciting, and you relay it well to us. Oh, good. And I don't well, think I'm you're ever told it's... thank you. Well, you're, you're welcome. I love doing it. We I appreciate do it. it. I mean, you just you <clears throat> look at different avenues and look at different things, and I, I sit here sometimes, and I shake my head, and, and I don't think we ever tell you thank you. Well, you're very, you're very welcome. I love doing it. That's kind of what, that's what I like so much about it, and so, you know. They're all, they all make me smile. Mm -hmm. And what you know what? When I'm having a really bad day, I'm in the I'm not usually in my office, right? Not I'm usually. Say you're at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> usually in my <laughs> office. Not at all. I'm usually in the, I love I love being with the kids. So but she's hard to find. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank so you. Good. Well, you are much appreciated. Yes, yes. Hard to find in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not that she's hard. Right. I used to, I used to, I used to clarify that. Mm -hmm. See that. We also met with uh, Monday Ben Shaw and uh, Sean Sitch from the county office yes. to talk about the, we were all along, we've been talking about new math programs and what we're looking at. Uh, and we're looking at some new programs, four through eight. And uh, we've looked at some of our really everyday math, uh, contemporary. Uh, Carnegie. Yeah. Carnegie. Carnegie. I yeah. said, I said Carnegie. Yeah. Carnegie, everyday math, looking at numbers. 
uh, and where those are being taught at. And we're in, right now we're looking at sending our groups to two different places, Hudson and Seoul, which are teaching the everyday math and teaching itself. We can't find anybody teaching the Carnegie. Right, so we're, gonna, we're looking, that's but a... If we find it, BD is in South Beach or Arizona, so... Oh. Do you need board so members I think to you go? need people to follow well, you. We always recommend board members <laughs> Yeah, so we met with those guys and we're looking at the pieces of where it goes. Springfield offers some of it, there's some, a couple other places. United. So it's a kind of math? It's, it's a type of math? Yeah, it's a program. What we, what we don't have right now, and it's our teachers are hardworking people. We have hardworking teachers, but they're out scouring for things, and they're designing their own things, which they can still do. But the bottom line is they, they are working very hard, and there's, it, but it's, it's not always cohesive. So these programs are cohesive. They can still fit things in. And you know, you're going to hear the word conceptual. That's what it is. And when, I, when they explained it to me, I said, wow, you guys are finally catching on with science. Because really, it's teaching the kids, giving them some background knowledge, and then letting them explore. Some kids learn better that way, mm -hmm. where you actually pick up things. Hands on. And, do it, and they go, oh my gosh, they're filling a box with these cubes. And they're like, oh, I get it. We don't have to count you know, 84 cubes. We can, like, there's the same number up is across and they make connections but you also have a lot of teacher guidance and so we're looking at k to two and or k to three and then four to eight and so really the programs kind of marry themselves and they 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 go from one so we know that they're going to get those underlying skills that they need to build on and it was funny because ben shaw is from the county he's our consultant and sean sitch is our consultant and he's the math guy the next day this woman shows up on my doorstep with these big everyday math kits for every grade level. And she said, Ben called me and said that you guys want to look at our program. So I'm going to have her come in, talk to the staff. I just set them out on the table as a little teaser. And then they can, um, they can, they can dig into them. And what our goal is, is, is to pilot next year. Yeah. We'll pilot um, two, two different programs next year. Just to see how they like kids it. a different view of things. Not the math investigations, but it's, it's a lot of it is the hands-on, conceptual And that's when they pick it up when they don't even know they're learning. Right. You know, they feel like they're getting a break yeah, and they're they really not. Right. They do something a little different. Um, one thing that, one real key component, I'm gonna, I've, been, I've, I've emailed the um, principal at United. She, they've had it there for five years with great success. And one of my big questions is how do we get our community, because this is different. So I'm going to work with her on that community engagement. We're starting. I have my I have a meeting coming up um, for for the advisory board, and I'm going to introduce it to them. And I'm, and so I want parents to go through trainings too. I want them to be an integral part of this. Our community has to be a part of this. So it's not a negative because it is different than what we learned, but it's okay because you know what the world is different. But I think it's smart to involve the parents because it's hard to help your kids at home, even younger, you younger, younger. Right. Before yeah. it was high school, now it is hitting more middle school where mm -hmm. they're coming home with terms we've never heard. And my goal, you know, I mean, so it's or ways to a process to do it. Right. Right. So we know. want to help them more, and not hurt them. Yeah. You know, we want to. And my goal is actually to get a good parent connection going. So when Jane Smith calls you, you can say, "Oh no, wait a minute! This is how what we can do." So and really having parents connect with each other because. There's so many of us, and we're happy to do whatever we can. But if those parents mm -hmm. can connect and parents can teach parents, wow, what a powerful thing that would be. Yeah, yeah really. So. Mm -hmm. I'm also uh, I've nominated Kelly Richards and Kevin Conway to do the Martha Holden Jennings, Martha Holden Jennings uh, program up in Cleveland in the summertime. Uh, it's a two-day program. They can pick up a lot of good ideas. Chrissy used one before. Uh, it just gives you a lot of different lessons that you can pick up and try and use with your kids depending on age level. Uh, so I've nominated both them. We'll, we'll hear probably in the next month or so if they get selected or not. And Mark Holden Jennings picks up the whole cost of everything. Oh, so, wow. Um, nice. Including their hotel, their meals, and everything. Mm -hmm. everything. So it'll be a nice, nice thing for them to get involved with that. As Debbie said, testing we started last Thursday. And Friday with our English language arts, ninth and tenth grade, we have 23 straight days of testing. Mm. How could it be testing? So, in, in the midst of that, um, we're doing the junior high kids, and then her kids will come in a little bit later. Uh, so we're utilizing every every space we have for testing because we're doing all on the computer. 
But uh, Monday was algebra, and then we had uh, junior high, the sixth grade, English language arts, first day was just killer. It was, it was the vocabulary. It was so tough. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, and the directions, which we knew, and we've been working on that, but when the kids see it the first time, they, they kind of freak out. And our kids don't have a lot of, our sixth graders down, I don't think, have a lot of typing ability. But they're more this, they're not so much this. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to testing. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're going to look at next year, see if we can do in the curriculum, get a few more things in there where we can get those kids to learn at least how to type before they get to that age of where Is there a keyboarding classes gone? Is there a thing we have a computer app, we have a computer business class at the high school level. We have a sixth grade computer and a seventh grade computer. So we really once a week we do once a week we do every grade level once a week because the computer lab and our tutors work with them on keyboarding, generating Google Docs. Because that's really kind of what they're using, our, our documents. They, they know how to open, save, things. They're starting to use for the older kids um, online tools, like um, how do you find your calculator. It was funny, I had a little boy in my office the other day. He was having trouble with math. He was having trouble with a lot of things. That's why he was in my office. <laughs> he was with math. And he, he was looking, and he was trying to, he was trying to um, figure something out. And he goes, wait a minute. And he pulls, I don't even know where it came from that this calculator and this ruler showed up on his computer screen. And so they're knowing exactly how to use wow. them now. So they're pulling, they're pulling things and they are teaching them that, you know, you think about a kindergartner, you know, 23 kindergartners sitting in a computer lab and they're, they're keyboarding and doing all those things. And that's great, it's a really good concept. And you have two people in there, it's tough. I mean, just putting their, learning their password and putting their username, in. we use room number for username, but, and their password, that's tough for them. They're little people, you know? And it's not games that they're doing at home. We're it's actually not technical writing. Right. That was the other thing the fourth grade teachers are very concerned about is during these tests, we don't have time to write a rough draft out. They have to compose, which is, it's a talent. You compose from your brain right to the computer, so they have to type. They can't write and correct. They have to type right from their from their mind. They have to create in their mind and type it directly on the computer. They don't have time to sketch things out. So it's teaching them different ways. Like she's teaching them to do one sentence outlines, one sentence for each thought because we know we have to have a five paragraph essay. So we're like, what's your opening line going to be, or what's your opening uh, paragraph? What's the gist of it going to be? And just jotting down five sentences and that's how they organize, which is a whole different way of organizing. So those are the things we're kind of dealing with with these tests. They have to go straight from their brain. They don't have time to create, and they don't have time to revise and edit either, really, so, yeah. It's just in, in, in between that, I'm doing the scheduling of the kids. <laughs> in the like class. So we did the sophomores today, Marvin, the freshman, which will be next year's sophomores. Uh, so we're doing that in between all the different testing. So it's a full month, all the way till May, May 13th. It's the end of the testing window. So we'll be doing testing at that point. Uh, a couple of events that are coming up. Uh, next Friday is the Spring Band Concert at 6 o'clock on the 22nd. Our Planet Earth kids will be going to the Pittsburgh Zoo on April 27th. Uh, that's a, a yearly trip that they take. Prom will be on April 29th at Firestone Farms. Oh, wow. Uh, be little, we tried to move it around different That's places nice. last year with the end tunnels this year. Um, we're going to be at Firestone Farms. And next year we're looking at uh, Youngstown State in Bartlett Room. Just something a little different to look at. Um, May 4th, the Simone County Art Show, which starts at 6 o'clock and goes till 7.30 if anyone's interested. That's at the Career Center. The choir concert's May 12th. There's a lot of things coming up before the next board meeting. So that's at 6.30. Jazz band concert will be May 19th, I think, which is the night of the next, next meeting. That'll be at 6 o'clock as well. So a lot of different events coming up. Uh, in between, trying to do everything else academically. Uh, we're doing all these other things too. So keep them busy. Okay. Tower? <clears throat> um, okay. Um, as it's kind of already been said about uh, testing, um, 
the, the one comment that I would have about that is, well, first off, uh, unlike last year, I keep pressure on all of our kids who were taking uh, the algebra um, test this year. Um, last year, I don't know if you remember, maybe the last board meeting, I think, I spoke about that and kind of told the kids, hey, relax, you know, it doesn't count this year and all that stuff. Blah, blah. And then, you know, we got burned, basically. Mm -hmm. So this year, I like doubled the pressure on him. He says, look, it's all on you. <laughs> you want to graduate, do well, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, it was maybe a little overkill, but still, you know, they, they need to feel, you know, some pressure, you know, obligation to that. So um, the one thing that I would say about uh, basically this window of testing that happens, um, and, I'll, and basically I'm speaking for, um, yeah, I'll speak for most, if not all, teachers who are affected by this testing. Basically, since everything is on the computer, you know, we're limited to the amount of computers we have. So we have to start testing basically in April, okay? When that happens, you know, some students or let's say some classrooms have a whole month more to teach, you know, before their test happens, okay? So that makes it difficult. For me, if I had my way, which I don't, but if I had my way, I'd go right back to uh, paper testing, and then you could have it all in, a, you know, in a few days and be done. With it, okay, I'm all for technology. Don't get me wrong, but the thing is, is when it comes to testing, it becomes, um, to me, a small nightmare, you know, because now you don't have that luxury of that extra time. And I stuff agree. Jamming this information in these kids' heads, and they they struggle with it anyways. If you have a normal period of time of teaching, and so It'd just be nice if they could shorten them. You know, I mean, if they could just get like a little glimpse, you know, in each department, if it didn't have to be so intense. You know well, what I mean? Well, it especially gets... with with mathematics, it's very difficult. If you have to write an equation, right. okay, you now have to go into some kind of symbols menu and you gotta find multiplication, division whatever the symbol is and then you move on to the next number and all that and whenever you have the square root or the you know the raise to some kind of exponent or whatever it becomes very cumbersome and when you are time tests and that it just doesn't work very well. and if you're like me you need pencil and paper just to work mm -hmm. it out so you're yeah. rewriting the problem and working it out and then i mean it would it well in in like uh, some of my classes especially like physics class um, I have told, uh, because designing on a computer happens, okay, but many designs and many ideas in that happen on napkins, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, you know, napkin design, here it is, what do you think, you know, or scrap and, paper, you know, or scrap paper, whatever, and the thing is, is that um, we've gotten into this testing now to where it's very cumbersome for the kids, you know, as, you know, been mentioned already about keyboarding and that um, you know that's an added obstacle they're nervous already well the thing is is we're, are we testing them on how well they use the keyboard and the computer program or are we, we testing off them on what they the know curriculum. Mm -hmm. and what their yes mm -hmm. curriculum you know their logic all that stuff mm -hmm. and they have this other hurdle hey, they don't, you know I mean, traditionally we've done quite well here but I think that that has become a bit of a hindrance. I hate to say it, but you know, I'm being Absolutely. a downer here. But okay, so um, negotiations; those are going to start very soon. Um, we're pretty much ready. We just have to set up some dates. Uh, start getting into that. Uh, I think I think it should go smoothly. Um, I don't really have uh, much more than that. We're excited. The end of the year's coming. And actually, my students are actually responding quite well. My students, it's not in anybody else's classrooms, but I've not heard of any problems. So uh, you know, even the seniors haven't really gotten a very strong case of senioritis that I've seen. So that's a good thing. Well, it's just not starting to get sunny, though. Right. That, that you <laughs> know, the sun, <laughs> the sun is a uh, good and bad. A couple thing. more days yeah, like yes. this. Yeah. We need some snow. If I want them to pay attention, exactly. you know, so. at least rain, <laughs> gloom and doom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all. I mean. Okay. Thank you.
Jeff, we have additional comments? Yeah, I got a couple things for you. A little bit more data. Um, if you noticed or have seen on the report card, one of the areas that is soon to be scored is, is prepared for success. <coughs> how, how well the students are prepared for success. And um, there's a lot of different factors that go into that measurement. Um, right now, some of the things that we have in place, and what I did was I compared, you know, there's nine schools on this list as far as um, where we compare with some similar schools. And what I put, the, the numbers there are percentages, and then in parentheses is where we kind of rank compared to those nine schools that we're talking about here. Um, ACT participation, that's how many kids took the ACT test. Um, you know, one of the, a critical measurement is the remediation free score. In other words, and I put those scores at the bottom, anybody with a 22 or higher in math <coughs> is considered by the colleges to be remediation free. Uh, 21 in English or an 18 in reading. So, you know, we're at almost a third of the kids that take the ACT are remediation free. So, you know, there's some discussion, you know, what are the, what are the colleges doing about that? Because um, somebody has pointed out, I think typically the college graduation rate for high schools in four years were 90 some percent. College is around 50%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's almost like, right. okay, what are, you, what are you guys doing to make sure these, right. these college students Do graduate your part. too? Um, as you can see, we're very, very high up there with the amount of dual credit courses that we offer. That helps for that prepared for success and, and the rating is going to be some points. Um, the Mahoney County ESC is writing a straight A grant and uh, I've kind of passed along some of the stuff to Doug to be part of that. Some of the things that include the um, industry credentialing, I guess I should back up to the honors diploma and you can see we're, you know, we've always pushed that and, uh, you know, the four years of English and the, uh, the advanced sciences. So uh, you can see that's kind of paid off in the long run. We're, we're tops in those areas for the kids that are uh, getting honors diplomas. The industry credential, basically right now, the only ones that get that are kids that go to vocational school because that's part right. of their program. So that's where the big push is going to be is the ones that stay here, getting them some type of industry credential. And that's what the uh, straight A grant through the county is going to be focusing on. There are some online course options. We already are part of Fuel Ed, which is an online, uh, more we've used it more as a remedial tool or makeup credit, credit recovery but they're gonna start doing some things on air. In fact, I just saw a thing, came across the email, and I didn't read it, um, to where uh, they're looking at passing laws that students uh, all be uh, like CPR trained. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some courses that they're talking about doing online where like an OSHA safety job, mm -hmm. credentialing, um, you know, to where that, that's good for anybody, mm -hmm. you know. So some of those kind of things are part of this this package that we're, we're looking at uh, utilizing with the ESC. So just some, some comparisons there. And then to take some of that a step further, um, this is a breakdown of the that remediation free percentage that we have. And um, as you can see, uh, what that figure means, and I have us on, on number one for the math, 33% of our kids that take the ACT are remediation free in math. And you can see that figure compared to others throughout the county and, and in the area. So that's actually the highest percentage of remediation free kids in, of the tri-county area. And then the next page is English. And you can see we're down a little bit on English, still at that 33%, but um, you can see some of the other schools have have a, uh, okay. I'm sorry, I think I said that wrong. The 33% for math is the percentage of kids that need remediation. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's a little confusing. Lower is better. Okay. Yeah, so oh, okay. the lower okay. the number, the better you're, you're doing. Oh, because okay. I'm looking at this and thinking. Yeah, right. And then um, okay. with the English, you can see we're still at about 33% needing English remediation, but typically English English and reading scores are usually a little bit higher than, than math. So we're doing a good job with the math, and uh, you know, 
we need to pick it up just a little bit in the in the reading and, and more specifically in the English language arts where um, you can see some of the discrepancies there. But just some more data that we're compiling and putting together for um, some of the curriculum needs and some things we need to look at. Any thoughts on, you know, what what other districts might be doing different while we're scoring where we are in, in English? You know, it's so hard. I know, you know, we've talked about um, we have a, a fair number of, of, not that their scores are going to be low, but a fair number of special ed kids that take the ACT, with plans to go to college. Um, but how do we score as high as we do in math? same population group. Yeah. You know what, Brian? Um, I know that in the elementary school, there are many kids in the elementary that they are, they qualify for um, intervention, which is special education, in reading and English, reading and writing, but they do not qualify in math, even in the elementary grades. If you look at our, if you look at our special ed numbers, they, we have, I mean, that language arts and reading is much higher than the math. That was hard. Yeah. yeah. It is. And no it's, math. The math is, it's, um, if you look at what the, con if you look at the, the uh, standards, it's higher level math at a younger age. And so they, it just takes, sometimes it just takes them, I mean, it's higher level reading and writing at a younger age. And so they're writing, they're, they're building skill, but they're not as focused on the skill as they are on like text evidence and things like that. And so they're really going into concept development. And so we put a lot of extra in there. And I think it's starting to show now. And it, that's the standards uh, that we're doing. But it's, it's much higher level. It's a frustration point. And it's to the point now where you're seeing, and that's one thing we're working on, is you're seeing kids that don't love to read because it's so high level and it's so technical now. It's, they don't have just, they have some pleasure reading, but it's a lot of it's, it's required reading because of the kind of reading they have, so. I guess the thing I'll say is, you know, there, there's always the element of, of population base, but when I, when I look at where we're at in math and I look at where we're at in English and, and reading in comparison, uh, I, I think like to see some real deep evaluation. I'd like to see some cross comparison with other school districts that have scored well and some more concrete answers back on what we're going to do different next year. Any other comments from the board? Sounds good. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's putting all the other test data together. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And sometimes, really too, with, and again, with percentages, you know, when we have 72% taking the ACT, well, 72% of the class of 60 is 40, 45 kids. Mm -hmm. And then when right, you know, right. a third yeah, of them, the numbers, the numbers are usually them, skewed. So we're talking 15 kids right. who took the ACT that need remediation. It, but still. So that messes with our percentages when you think about it. focusing more on specific reading and specific skills. Mm -hmm. So we kind of broke that down now, so we're not trying to do it all at one time. We have more of a semester, so we'll get more. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it'd be interesting to look at what's being tested within the ACT English component, you know. So, all right. Thank you. Um, also, I have updated, and we'll, uh, these are just drafts, but we can approve these at the next meeting. The um, K-5 to principal job description and the 6 to 12 principal job description. So you can look those over if there's anything you see. Doug and Debbie had looked at so them. So we can add a bunch of stuff? Um, what's that? We can oh, I had a stuff. bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's not even listening. So. There's anything on there that you, uh, you know, you have a question on, whatever, like I said, we'll just, we'll have them ready to be adopted at the, uh, at the yeah, next yeah, board meeting before. and then, about the only thing left that we really need to look at is the guidance, and they're coming out with new guidance evaluation framework, so I'd rather wait until they've got that out, that because sense. I've kind of tied these in with the OPES evaluation for principals and some of mm -hmm. the things that they need to do. Doug had mentioned the art show. These are actual invitations with the information about the art you. show for you, and kind of a feel good, nice thing. Our band was at a... Uh, 
not a competition, but like a uh, simulated competition. And thought this was a nice letter from the director of bands at Teal College, uh, commenting them on their their performance. At that, uh, I believe this was the one that was at the. Um, I can't remember if this was at Howland or at Hubbard. I know they played at both. This might have been the one at Hubbard. I love Teal College, but that was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. That is. He didn't have to do that. Right. I love them. That's very nice to even take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that says something about him, too. Yep. That's nice. That is nice. That's all I have. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Or, or firsted. I'm first. first is Al third. Al third it did it. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mrs. Potts. Yes. Mrs. Powell. Yes. Mr. Banyo. Yes. Mr. Blevins. Yes. We get the charge.